evening, weather geeks and dweebs. We're going to take a relatively quick deep dive into our forecast because uh, I say quick because it's pretty easy forecast for the next several days. I wanted to take a few minutes this evening and address what's the deal with this winter. Um, not only is the forecast not exactly panning out as we thought, but uh, just remarkable warmth and lack of snow so far this winter season. Here's a look at the temperature anomalies over the last 60 days. It's been a cool winter in parts of the Intermountain West and along the West Coast, but from about dead center in the middle of the country on east, and including a lot of Canada, it has been definitely a warmer than average winter, including around here. So we're going to do a full autopsy kind of on the uh, on the winter and the winter forecast at the end of meteorological winter, at the end of February, but we can start uh, talking a little bit about uh, what's uh, what we're looking at here, and I think I kind of suspect one of the main culprits uh, is La Nina and it not behaving exactly as we kind of bargained for in November and very early in December. What I mean by that is uh, not every La Nina is alike. Some La Ninas, those coolest waters compared to average, are centered kind of in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Sometimes they're centered more towards the eastern part of the Pacific Ocean. Well, back in November when we were formulating the forecast, uh, the La Nina was definitely an eastern-based La Nina. And while it's not uncommon when La Nina starts to decay for it to become a little more centrally based, I think that process might have occurred a little faster than we bargained for. And so as this transition to more of a central based La Nina, I think it started to uh, make, uh, cause some changes, I should say, to the uh, overall weather patterns across the Northern Hemisphere. We'll talk more about that momentarily. Other things we can talk about, uh, it's not as much of a story right now, but it was earlier this winter, the onslaught of storm systems coming into the West Coast, so referred to as atmospheric rivers or even some bomb cyclones. In other words, it just got really windy and wet and a lot of snow uh, for the Western U.S. And when that happens, you know, it kind of floods the lower 48 with Pacific air rather than Arctic air. And so that can be partly to blame for our warm winter. Uh, can we say climate change is directly responsible for the warmth this winter? No, we can't say that. Well, what we can say is there's always going to be cold and snowy winters, but the kinds of winters that we're having this year and we've had for several years now, uh, those flavors of winters, they're going to occur more frequently as we go forward in a, uh, in a warmer climate. So, you know, we can't say this is because of climate change, but we can say the odds favor winters like this more than they used to, and those odds will continue to go up as we go into the future. All right, the difference between central-based and eastern-based La Ninas is, you know, pretty pretty remarkable. Um, this is a look at the composite, pardon me, of uh, central-based La Ninas over the last handful of decades. Uh, notice the west coast is cold, the eastern U.S. is warm. This map looks an awful lot like what has happened so far this winter. Let's go back to that. This is this year's map, and then this is the composite of central-based La Ninas. Pretty remarkable how similar that looks. And so we've, as we transition to a central-based La Nina, it's behaving more like that rather than an east-based La Nina, which is kind of what the winter forecast was partially based upon. An eastern-based La Nina looks a little, more, a little more like this. Not exactly a super cold signal for us, but a colder signal. Notice the cold tends to penetrate more into the eastern U.S. in this composite of east-based La Ninas. There are exceptions, of course. You see 2021, 20, 2022 on this list. That was not a particularly cold winter at all in our region, but uh, there were some colder winters. Uh, 2017, 2018, the last winter we've had that uh, has been reasonably close to average. Uh, that winter was very near average, almost, uh, you could even say it was a little cooler than average, depending on which data set you'll, you use and what 30 year average you want to use. But that was the last kind of very normal winter that we have had in recent times after a couple of really warm winters before that, 2015, 16, and 16 into 17. All right, so that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. And again, we'll do a full autopsy on the winter uh, forecast and the, and the winter season that we just experienced at the end of meteorological winter. We're not going to close the book on it by any stretch, even though we've got a warm forecast, certainly. And I think the warmth is going to outdo the cool, the cold, I should say, for much of the rest of the month. I still do think that March will have some potential. In the meantime, it's a lot colder out there tonight, that is for sure. 26 degrees colder than the 7 o'clock hour last evening. We have a weak trough of low pressure pivoting through, a couple of flurries. We'll about do it for tonight. We even had a little clearing of the sky late this afternoon leading to a decent sunset. And there'll be a few clouds around tonight, but there'll be some holes in those clouds. And then I'm expecting just bright sunshine to break out as we go into the day on Saturday. Where's the snow this weekend? Well, it's certainly not here. It's in the south. 
there's going to be quite a bit of snow, especially in the higher elevations in the central and southern Appalachians, even as far south as northern Alabama. It's actually kind of hilly in northern Alabama. Same thing with northern Georgia, uh, north of Atlanta, especially. It's very hilly terrain in the southern Appalachians, and they can see some snowflakes and even several inches of snow in the highest peaks of the Smokies and uh, heading into extreme western North Carolina and up into southwest Virginia as well. For us, high pressure rules the roost. Bright and sunny Saturday afternoon. We'll get some high clouds, some cirrus clouds trying to filter in on Sunday as this storm system pushes by to the south and east. We're just on the fringes of this. I, I still think it's a mostly sunny day on Sunday. I don't think it's one of those days that really becomes kind of milky. Um, the, the cirrus deck will be pretty thin locally. So this is just a nice afternoon. We're talking 50 or so. That's a good dozen degrees warmer than the average. And even though we have a front on the weather map on Monday, this comes through with a little fanfare, just some fair weather clouds on Monday. Temperature-wise this weekend, we'll have some cold mornings. Pretty typical February chill, 24 tomorrow morning, 26 on Sunday morning. And we're talking about uh, seasonable weather for the afternoon on our Saturday and then above average starting on Sunday and taking us through next week. And, you know, we had 68 yesterday. Could we flirt with something like that again Wednesday into Thursday? I think so, and I think this sequence will actually bear some similarities to this week in that we'll have a, a probably a fairly windy Thursday, some showers around, a strong cold front comes through Thursday night and the first thing Friday morning. And next Friday will be kind of like today, much more typical of the season. But I think Tuesday is going to be awesome for Valentine's Day. I think Wednesday is going to be awesome. I think the sun's going to be out on Wednesday, and uh, temperatures will get into the 60s. Thursday's 60s probably come with some clouds, some wind, and maybe a couple of showers as well. All right, so we're not done with the remarkable warmth just yet. We're going to have these little pockets where it gets colder at times, like late next week, but then the warmth is going to bounce back, and that's going to be the case, I think, for much of the rest of the month. If you've been watching the videos of late, you know that uh, we think that March is questionable at this point. There's the potential for some stratospheric warming that will displace the polar vortex and, and knock some, some cold down into the mid-latitudes, but that's speculation at this point. It's not a high-confidence thing. Um, but uh, we're not going to close the book on winter on February 10th. That is, uh, that's uh, flirting with danger, for sure, from a forecasting standpoint. In the meantime, thanks for watching tonight. Have a great weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here next week.